jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. If you like what I do, you can go to my website, click on the Gift Me page. You can send me a juicy gift. Or you can go directly to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland and send me your life's savings. Can you imagine if that worked? Oh man. Mind you, I'll probably only get the life savings sent by someone like me. It'd be like, you know, £1.20. Mind you, I actually phoned my friend up today and asked for him to put £1 into my bank account to lend me one pound so that I could uh, so I didn't have I just didn't have enough in there for what I needed to do just one pound it's kind of embarrassing it would be if I had an embarrassing bone in me if I had the ability I don't have the ability to really get embarrassed anymore I don't know if that's come with age or I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Right, so give a brief description of of what this podcast is about. Now, it's called Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And I've been doing it for quite some time. I started at the beginning of 2018 it's now October the 12th is it or 13th I don't know 2019 and I it's it's developed unlike my body it's developed into something um, I'm not even sure what it is anymore it's a mixture of things it's it's me talking about absolute rubbish for a, an hour talking nonsense just you know uh, and being boring for an hour so there's that side of it which fits in with the title of this particular podcast. So it gives you an opportunity to allow your brain to just switch off naturally. It's almost like your brain just gives up, just like it says, oh, that's enough. That's enough. I was and just you just fall asleep because you you just give up, basically. You just it's like the <laughs> the capacity to think just disintegrates temporarily, leading to sleep. But then when you wake up, you feel great. And it's almost like you may feel and it might it's a weird one really. I can't really explain it. But you could listen to me and think, what on earth is he talking about? But then you listen and you stop listening. You fall asleep, and then the next day you think, "What on earth was he talking about? And why 
did I fall asleep? And then you listen again, another time, you know, maybe the next evening, perhaps to a different recording because there's hundreds to choose from. And you may be thinking to yourself, what, oh, what, really? What is, he's saying different stuff, but it's still pointless. What is he talking about? Why? And then you fall asleep again, like you did before. When you wake up the next day, or eight hours later, or whatever, you know, it is. And again, you might be thinking, well, how can someone talking about a ferret or the different rooms that they lived in or about a garden shed that's in his bedroom? Or how, how, can, how can that be in any way therapeutic? whatsoever yet for some reason you're feeling better about yourself you're feeling more relaxed but also kind of more positive about yourself more confident maybe more of a sense of well-being but it doesn't make sense but how can you get that from listening to someone just talking about pretty much nothing. Well, I kind of think that, in a way, it doesn't matter why. It's more the end result that, well, and the, you know, the, the process, the experience, that is more important than the why or the how or trying to think logically about it because if listening to this listening to me every night or every day Helps you to fall asleep. Helps your mind to switch off. And you end up feeling more just happier within yourself. Almost as if let go of some of that stuff from the past that was holding you back and maybe you didn't realise that you had stuff from the past that was holding you back so it could be quite a strange feeling Because, you know, if you go to the gym and, you know, you get, for whatever reason, you go to the gym, if it's to put muscle on um, or to lose some weight or to, to tone up or to increase your stamina or, you know, whatever, preparing for a marathon... then you know kind of I don't know if I went to the gym I could 
look in the mirror in the bathroom. <laughs> so I just laughed at the idea of looking into the bathroom mirror at myself. It usually makes me laugh when I do it. But, you know, I could see the muscles. I could say, oh, that's because I've been going to the gym. Or if you've been stretching, I could look in the mirror and, and look at part of myself and say, that's because I've been stretching it. So it's kind of whatever you've done something and it can kind of explain. You know, if you bleach your hair, you say, oh, look in the mirror, I've got bleached hair because I've bleached my hair. It can be explained away. But sometimes feelings such as changes to how you feel feel about stuff, about your present reality. As it changes, it doesn't necessarily always make sense why it's changed. The reason behind that particular change. If it feels good and if it's useful, then that's isn't that a positive, a beneficial thing? You know, that's what I'm thinking. And what else can this podcast possibly offer? Variety. I don't mean like juggling or magic tricks. Opera singing. I don't do opera singing. And juggling and magic tricks, regardless of how good I was, it wouldn't quite work on a podcast. Mind you, the good thing about that is I wouldn't have to practice. I could just tell you that I'm juggling 14 balls and a, a baby and you'd you know, <laughs> and you just you believe me wouldn't you because well you might not a magic trick I could just say yeah I've just made the Eiffel Tower disappear wow isn't that good and you'd be like whoa can't believe you just did that I'm now going to make the entire of London just disappear. Wow, he made the whole city of London disappear. No magician's ever done that, ever. So yeah, that's, you know... It's a good thing about podcasts. You can lie. You can lie. I love lying. I love lying's brilliant. But only in this kind of context. I think if you're going to lie, you got to lie so people know that you're lying. Otherwise it's no fun. If people believe it, then it's no fun, isn't it? That? That's just personal for me, but... Oh yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all personal. So that's what the podcast is possibly about. So, you know, I like to talk about stats. I don't mean 42, 28, 35. I don't that kind of... And that's just my bum. I don't like to talk about... Uh, I like to talk about the different podcasts and how well they're doing. And this is... Quite a popular podcast, this one, the Let Me Bore You to Sleep. It's growing in popularity, but it's not my most popular podcast. Kinda wish it was, but it's not. I suppose cause this is the one I put. I put more of myself into this. Kind of. Yeah, it's 
more personal, isn't it? It's me talking about my life. But also the relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. That podcast is also very personal and it means a lot to me on a personal level due to my own personal experiences in my personal life, personally. It's a personal thing. And each person has their own personality that's affected by personal uh, incidents that uh, happen in their personal lives. And... uh, That's why I use my personable personality. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of different ways of saying personable. A person, person path, and a bit of that. I can't remember what I was talking about. Yeah, my podcasts. So, the most popular podcast now is one of my, I think it's. Hypnosis for sleeping deeply. I think that's the one. And it's there's nine hundred or is it ninety nine thousand and something downloads on there. So it's probably gonna reach the one hundred thousand in a few days. And the second most popular is the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast, which is at about ninety seven thousand downloads. So, you know, probably, probably by the end, by this time next week, I'll have two podcasts that are in, that have reached 100,000, which is good. Um, I don't know what I am with this podcast. I think it's about 80,000 for this one to let me bore you to sleep. I think that's about 80,000 or something like that. So, probably, I don't know, maybe a month away from reaching the, the 100,000, or maybe a couple of weeks. I don't know, I can't even remember. It might be, it's hard to tell really. I'm not sure. I can't predict the future. I don't know if I'd want to. Would you want to be able to predict the future? I don't know if I'd want to. I might. I don't know. By the way, if you just won the Euro lottery, which was about 170 million euros, can you lend me twenty pound, please? Thanks. So, <sighs> what I thought I would do today is do what I was going to do yesterday, but I didn't do it yesterday because I don't know how, but I managed to get this. Directed by other stuff, but I don't know what. So I'm gonna have a look at the National Enquirer. And this is from the October the 14th, 2019. And that's because it cost me one pound fifty-nine pence. And that's, as I'm sure you agree, a major investment. And it would seem, it would seem somehow immoral to not use it in at least one of my podcasts. I mean, 
it's like buying a buying a car and never using it. It's exactly like that. So this is a uh, National Enquirer. It's on the front cover, you know, I didn't even know that it was still being written. But it is. I've got proof here. It's in front of me. It's actually... I wonder how many pages there are. In this magazine, I don't mean in the world. There's... What do they think? People just cut the pages up and then want to get them all stacked together in the right order again. Put them into some kind of a folder for keepsake. But then they've got lots of different magazines. Oh no, we're going to get them all modelled up. What should we do? That's okay. This one's got NE next to it. Oh, that's handy. front cover here it says Angelina Hollywood's most hated woman or women never know because it's spelled the same isn't it could be most hated women or woman and who knows what A-listers say behind her back plan to destroy Brad backfires no I don't believe that no she split up with her husband and wants to destroy his life no I can't believe that would ever happen Jessica Simpson how she lost 100 libs LBS in 6 months wow Isn't it weird? So they've got that at the bottom, like it's almost celebratory. And she's got her hands on her, on her hip. No, no, um, is that between your stomach, yeah. Her hands on her stomach. Almost to sort of, like, say, look, my hands can touch each other nearly. I don't know, I don't know if that's what's in her mind. She might be thinking, can't wait till this photographer goes away so I can have a burger. And then at the top it says 97 LBS. But this one's got an apostrophe. The other one was almost floaty, kind of happy. Celine Dion. Nervous breakdown, so... They're talking that she's got lost weight and she's, there's a picture of her and, yeah, she looks very slim. And there's a picture, and she's not smiling and there's another one. But she's clearly not posed for that photograph because, well, she's been around a long time. I'm sure if you were going to pose, we. She wouldn't be wearing those earrings. I'm a fashion expert now. It happened overnight. I woke up. Suddenly I was an expert on jewellery. Weird, isn't it? I used to wear earrings when I was younger. It's a funny story. I... Actually, no, it's not very funny, but... I 
go. I don't know which friend it was. I don't know if it was Dean or... Uh, who's the other one? Uh, Neil. But I used to hang around with a girl that lived up the road from me. And get this, this is how I asked her out on a date. I was, it's true, it's, it's totally true, you, you're just going to blow your mind. I was watching Rocky, the film Rocky, and uh, not, not the film, the one with the box, so not the other Rocky, because I don't think there was much dating in that film, but uh, it's Rocky, the film. A lot of people watching Rocky when it first aroused, uh, arrived uh, were motivated maybe to take up boxing or uh, and the music very inspirational I think it was listeners that I used to get my my toes pumping you know it's like really oh I want to be a boxer I don't think I ever watched it at the cinema because I was too young because if I'm correct Rocky, the first Rocky film came out in I think it was either 1977 or 1979 I don't recall which however I was too young to go and see it because I would have only been either seven or nine. Let me explain that. Um, if it was released in 1977, um, I would have been seven because I was born in 1970. So what's that? 71, two, three, 1974. 1975, 1976, 1977. So, yeah, I was seven. And that's how I work out my age. Because any year during the 70s, that's how old I was. So, in 1971, I was one. In 1972, I was two. In 1973, I was three. In 19, <laughs> 19 <laughs> I can't remember what the next one is, but you know, I you know I was that age at different times, and. Uh, good thing about aging is the numbers go up because it would be complicated wouldn't it imagine if it went like and now you're 5 and now you're going to be 3 and now you're 14 now you're 12 and it's like oh so confusing but it doesn't so it goes up but what I've noticed as I've got older I've started aging myself older than I am 
which never used to happen before. So when I was 29, I pretty much stayed under that 30 line. And when I hit 30, I didn't mention it. I mean, certain people knew, members of my family knew. And because they know me. But I didn't go around telling other people because being 30 seemed a little old at the time. I mean, I'm 49 and now, so 30 was, was almost a child back then compared to now. I'd say I'm count nine. Mentally, I'm probably just about hitting puberty. Or maybe not. Probably still about 11. 11, yeah. Mentally. Physically, I'm about 93. I don't know. It's hard to tell, isn't it? I noticed as I got older I started telling people that I'm older than I am I don't mean saying oh yes I'm 57 I don't mean that because that would be silly but I I was telling people that I was 49 for at least the last 6 months before I became 49 but I wasn't 49. I was only 48. I say only, but you know, obviously it's. Uh, I don't even have 48 pound. But anyway, it's not really relevant. But yeah, 49. So I hit 49. And. And now I'm telling people I'm 50. But I'm not. I'm 49. I've got a long time before I hit 50. What's this? Set October. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. 10 months. Over 10 months, in fact. And by then, I'll have over a million downloads on my podcasts. Because I'm obsessed with the stats. I am obsessed. I have, on my website, I've updated the stats about seven times today. Or yesterday, rather. Because every couple of hours I go on there and I refresh and it's gone up by a few hundred. And sometimes by a hundred, sometimes by, you know, depends basically every every minute of every day somebody somewhere is listening to me waffle on about something which is kind of unusual Andre's just come out of his bag to do a that's weird it was a false alarm there was a, an invisible poo. No, he came out, stood on the paper in his normal stance. <laughs> and nothing happened, and he went back in. Now he's come out again. Now he's really. His tail sticks up when he's doing it. But he's not awake. does it in his sleep so he, get, he walks out of his bag runs to the corner where the paper is and he crouches down and does you know what he needs to do does a squirt and then he runs back into the 
into the bag. Now, if I pick him up, sometimes he does a wee wee as well. I usually don't pick him up if he's done a poo, but if he's done a wee wee, I might pick him up. And he's asleep. And I fall asleep in my arms where he already is. He's like, I suppose he's semi conscious when he gets out of the bag, but he just falls asleep in my arms. And then, maybe five, ten minutes later, he wakes up. And I make, and he looks up at me, and my face makes him jump. He doesn't know how he got there. You don't look like my bag. I imagine he might say, "I don't know." It's hard to know, isn't it? Really. It's really raining today. took him out for a walk because man I tell you what all I wanted was some peace today I needed some peace just needed to just lay down on my bed this was yesterday that I'm talking about it because I've not gone to bed yet just needed to be left alone just I lay down on a bed and he was hassling me non-stop jumping up on me biting my toes and running up my leg nibbling on me eyelid licking my face basically just trying to get me out of bed kept putting him onto the floor and he kept climbing back up then he discovered a way to get off the bed onto um, the clothes rack where a lot of my clothes are just hanging up so he's on there rubbing himself over all my clothes that I try to keep away from him so that I don't smell like ferret wee when I go out just to get on top of the chest of drawers and knock loads of stuff off right and he was trying to get onto the windowsill so that he could get out of the window because I had all the windows open because I have a garden shed in my bedroom and it stinks stinks of shed really really stinky shed in my bedroom now it's taken me 49 years to get used to my own stink that I produce now I've got to start getting used to a new one in the bedroom it's not fair so then I get him offered there runs into the kitchen starts banging the uh, cupboard in the kitchen he basically lays on his back and he pushes the kitchen door um, the cupboard door open and just lets it slam continuously and then he runs in and he just stares at me because sometimes I'm laying down on the right side and I've got my eyes like you know when you've got your eyes partly open they're not really open but they're kind of open a bit like if you were sharing a bedroom with a stranger and you kind of weren't sure you know uh, keep one eye open not the, how often would you share a bed, not room, with a, sh a stranger, but the last time I did that was when I worked at Butlins, yeah, Butlins, that 
that was weird because I didn't know when I went there that I was going to be sharing the bedroom with a stranger. But as someone once told me, everyone's a stranger till you get to know them. Every friend you have was once a stranger. And I remember saying to that person, shut up. sound from that and now I'll start to take it off it's uh, I don't know maybe and you know what happened next I'm lying in bed finally falling asleep and I hear a crash and I knew straight away it was a plate on the floor and Andre was on the table plate on the floor and he was on my he was basically using a laptop he was walking on the laptop he opened up pages I didn't even know existed seriously things I'd never seen before he opened up on the laptop I didn't know what the hell they were and I couldn't figure out how he got onto the table because when I remember I pulled the table away from the chair the, the black squeaky chair that I was sitting so he can't jump onto it and then I realised that although I'd moved the table I hadn't moved the chair that I sit on when I'm at the table so he must have jumped onto the chair and then onto the table from there. The reason he did it is because he wanted to get to my breakfast bowl that had some milk in it still. And he loves the milk. Loves the milk. So what I did, I don't normally let him drink milk because it upsets his stomach. But I thought, uh, that'll punish him. So I give him, I gave him, uh, basically bought him a cow. I let him uh, drink as much milk as he wants. I didn't do that at all. I don't know why. See, that was a lie, but it was an obvious lie, wasn't it? That's what I mean about lying. If you're going to lie, make it really silly. Otherwise... It's just no fun. Especially when you say something really silly and the person's like, uh, that doesn't make sense. I remember I stayed one of my places, my many hundreds of places that I lived in. I said, I'm just going to go to the little, little girl's room. And she said, don't you mean the little boy's room? I, no, I meant to say what I said. Mistakenly going to say, I'm going to the little girl's room. Well, I wouldn't want to mistakenly say that, am I? But yeah, that wasn't. That's what happened in that conversation. That was that was it, really. I'm not sure why I mentioned it. Many conversations are very similar. Ooh, pink casino, it's an adverb. Everyone 
one's wearing pink. So what are they saying? Um, mm. This is making me tired of talking about this. Whatever it was I was talking about. I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, a recent female that was in my bed, right? I'll try and get that image out of your head, but she was in my bed and she called me Andre. I'm not even joking, she called me Andre. So any time a boyfriend or a girlfriend, husband, wife calls you by a different name, at least you haven't been called the name of a ferret. Yeah, she was French. didn't learn much, I don't really know much French. My only memory of French was, I was in junior school, and they had these slides. I don't mean like a fun part, like slides that you, you looked at on a screen. wasn't given it a lot of attention. So I think I was Spider Man was on in the evening on telly and I was thinking about that. But the uh, I had the idea in my head that everyone in France has warm milk and bread for breakfast. a bowl of warm milk and bread which I don't think is true yet I quite like the idea of it yet I wouldn't want to eat it I wouldn't want a bowl of warm milk unless I had breakfast cereal with it like you know Weetabix or Ready Break or um, not shredded wheat so much. Shredded wheat, I prefer the cold milk. What's the other ones? Not shredded wheat, not Weetabix. No, shredded wheat. Did I say shreddies? Not shreddies, but shredded wheat because they're big. Although you can get smaller shreddies, but I think they're, they're called mini shreddies. No, mini shredded wheat. Shreddies is different. Yes, yeah, so a shredded wheat. With hot milk. Very nice. Tastes very different from the way it does with cold water. But <laughs> then most things would... But it tastes very different from when it does with cold milk. I tried to eat ready break with hot water once. Well, a few times. And it's wrong. It's just really wrong. It's not as wrong as the outfits that Elvis Presley used to wear in the last couple of years of his concerts but it's much it's very wrong like the, the hot water and ready break it's wrong Sleep here. Uh, but yeah, this.
this this lady, she was French, and I said, I don't know much French, but I think that I was, I think she was telling me, basically, that I'm an incredible lover, pretty consider an incredible lover, um, I thought I should really check it out, but she kept saying, uh, un petit penny, un, pe un petit penny, and laughing, so I imagine she's like, oh, you're a great lover, and uh, rejoicing in it with laughter, so I felt quite good about myself, I felt somewhat invigorated, Another thing I remember in high school, I don't think I was allowed to do French because, or if I did it, I did it for one year, but I made no effort at all. Yeah, didn't, didn't, I kind of couldn't see the point. Why learn another language? I've not even learned this one yet. But it's, it's, some people are very good at... Um, and... Lingus? A ling, ling... What is it? Yeah, gymnastic, linguist, linguistics, linguistics, words, talking and stuff. And the idea of doing it with another language, I just didn't... Um, see the point I suppose because I had no interest in it I didn't know anybody that was that spoke a different language and to be honest and this isn't even a joke really I I found it difficult to communicate with humans. I'm not saying French aren't humans, I'm just saying with people generally, I kind of didn't necessarily understand. It's understanding intentions and meanings. Not always really. Yeah. So I think the idea of adding a bunch of new words, unless I hadn't learned all the words yet of this language, seemed a bit. forward really a little bit I don't know optimistic possibly but even though I enjoyed reading books I've never been never never was a wordsmith 
really embraced the big long words that aren't in common use because in some ways to me that is the opposite to communication by using words that isn't in common use it's almost an alienation of the person you're talking to possibly but then that would vary wouldn't it depending upon I guess who you're around and what kind of people you associate with in the sense of what type of communication they use so if you I don't know I suppose if you worked in if you work in insurance there's a lot of insurance terms that are used if you work in banking I'm sure there's a lot of banking terms and phrases and words that are used within that industry which perhaps you just talk naturally as if it was commonplace within general society but it's not but maybe if you were spending most of your time with that particular group of society it may almost seem like it's the norm you may start to generalise thinking that everybody talks in those terms when in fact possibly maybe they don't yeah because I've had quite a few different jobs over the years so I've had a few different terminology phrases and words and stuff to learn just as I'm sure if I was studying mathematics I would be using long words like pentamphium or pentangle potassium pentathigon whatever Triangle, that's quite a big word. Triangle. Um, cir circumference. No, circumference. Circumference. Um, Hepatite. No, hepath. Hepatangle. Hepathos. Hepapathalon. See, there's lots of different words. Uh, for mathematics but that would be a good book to have so I could start to learn some of the words uh, that are used within the science of mathematics yeah that could be quite groovy Because I do like to learn new things sometimes and I never put a lot of thought into mathematics I was okay with adding taking away was it was kind of similar it was similar to adding up but the opposite 
so it's yeah, you learn to walk forward and then you you learn to walk backwards and it's, it's a little bit different you know there's more chance you're going to fall over a bang into a lamppost but it's you learn to do it so I learned to do basic uh, taking away and then there was the times the times stuff learned in the times table my goodness I I remember I used to have the times table with the graph you know like the, the little boxes and you crossed it through and it's the ten times the table and I had that taped to the back of my uh, textbook not textbook course book one that I'd been writing and um, I did really well. Well, I thought I was doing well because I thought the the crosses that the mark that the teachers were giving me that was like a a really good thing. I thought it was kisses they were giving me. So I thought that's that's romantic. Um, but it turned out it was just they were wrong. Oh, brilliant got confusing then especially when it came to Christmas and birthdays and I'd have crosses underneath birthday cards like, happy birthday Jason and then a cross like oh what have I done wrong very, very confusing especially when it was more than like one cross it's like oh they really are cross uh, I never questioned it because I was too busy doing other things. You know, like going down and making sure the toothbrush was wet so it looked like I'd cleaned my teeth. Wetting the soap so it looked like I'd washed my hands. You know, things like that. Just busy boy I was. Busy, busy boy. Sometimes my hair would stick up for no reason. I'm not sure why I'm telling him that. It's just, it's just another bathroom story, really. Just another bathroom story. It's another mirror-related story. Yeah, I had the same thing happen yesterday. Or the day before, because I'd been lying down on the side with my head. I wasn't lying on the side of my head, I had, my whole body was there. But um, my hair was sticking up on one side. And that hasn't really happened for some time. talking about again I'm practically asleep I'm kind of like Andre I do stuff when I'm asleep I just don't do what he does which means I need to go remind you to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.